This is Barry Zelma speaking for Claim School Incorporated's blog, Zelma on Insurance. Today we're going to talk about the pollution exclusions contained in most commercial general liability policies and why an insured or group of insureds who intentionally build houses on, contem on contaminated property is clearly, obviously, and unambiguously excluded. And it is sad that the people who get a judgment against the polluters cannot collect because they went into bankruptcy. But that does not change what insurance is or how it is applied. Plaintiffs Victor Rosario, Nilda Maldonado, Jose Flores, and Naomi Flores appealed from three law division orders dismissing their second amended complaint against the defendant insurance carriers on dispositive cross motions on whether insurance coverage applies. Having obtained a nearly $2 million judgment against the bankrupt developer, of their residential properties for failing to disclose their homes were built on contaminated properties, plaintiffs sought the proceeds of the comprehensive general liability policies issued by the defendant insurance carriers to the developer. The motion judge in the present action concluded the pollution exclusion contained the defendant's CGL policies precluded coverage. In Victor Rosario et al. versus the Hartford and the Western World Insurance Companies, a January 4, 2023 decision of the New, York, New Jersey Appellate Division Court of Appeal, the facts were resolved because the plaintiffs purchased a single-family home from developer Marco Construction and Management in 2006. But unbeknownst to the plaintiffs, before Marco Construction subdivided the lots, they were utilized by the previous owner and co-developer, Stephen Muzi Jr., for commercial purposes that contaminated the property. Automotive fluids and waste oil were discharged into floor drains and the soil. In 1988, the underground storage tanks were removed from the site without proper notice to the authorities. Thereafter, the Department of Environmental Protection, the DEP, directed Muzi to conduct a remedial investigation of the property, but it was not completed. On December 31, 2004, with the DEP still waiting for Muzi to do something to clear the contamination, Muzi and Dominic Antonini executed a joint venture agreement to develop the property. Antonini was apprised of the property's prior usage and before Marco Construction took title to the property in February of 2005, Antonini received several documents confirming the presence of outstanding environmental issues on the site. Thereafter, Antonini was told the property was contaminated. And later that year, Antonini, anyway, built two single-family homes on the subdivided lots. However, Antonini failed to disclose the environmental issues to the realtors or prospective purchasers, including the plaintiffs. The available insurance were basic commercial general liability policies issued by the defendant insurance carriers to Marco Construction. And at issue in this appeal is a Hartford Fire Insurance Company's policy and a Western World Insurance Company's policy that were in effect at the times relevant to the claims. Both policies provided substantially similar coverage. Each policy contained virtually identical pollution exclusions and exceptions to those exclusions. In pertinent part, the policies provided, quote, one, bodily injury or property damage arising out of the actual alleged or threatened discharge, dispersal, seepage, migration, release, or escape of pollutants 
A, at or from any premises, site, or location, which is or was at any time owned or occupied by or rented or loaned to any insured. However, this subparagraph does not apply to bodily injury or property damage for which you may be held liable if you are a contractor and the owner or lessee of such premises, site, or location has been added to your policy as an additional insured with respect to your ongoing operations performed for that additional insured at the premises, site, or location, and such premises, site, or location is not an endeavor was owned or occupied by or rented or loaned to any insured under the other than that additional insured close quote the policies also contained exclusions for expected or intended injury precluding coverage in pertinent part for quote bodily injury or property damage expected or intended from the standpoint of the insured in addition, Western World's policy excluded coverage for known injuries or damages defined as, quote, bodily injury or property damage which first occurs before the inception date of the policy, but continues to occur during the policy period if such bodily injury or property damage is known to any insured prior to the inception date of the policy, close quote. Plaintiffs filed the underlying action against the developers and builders. And in May of 2008, Marco Construction, through its insurance agent, filed a notice of claim under the Hartford policy, advising that claimants allege the insured subdivided a property that had known chemical pollutants following an investigation. On August 11, 2008, Hartford denied coverage under the pollution and expected or intended injury exclusions. Marco Construction also demanded that Hartford and Western World provide defense and liability coverage protection, but both insurers refused. In June of 2014, a five-day bench trial was conducted in the underlying matter against the sellers and builders, and the trial court issued a 35-page written opinion accompanying its aggregate judgment of $1,930,118.86 plus interest on most of plaintiff's claims. Among several other factual findings, the court determined, quote, Antonini knew that the contamination issues had not yet been resolved at the site when he agreed to allow Marco Construction to take title to the property. The court further found Marco Construction and Antonini were aware the property was contaminated before Antonini began excavating the foundations and before he built any of the houses because a witness, a potential buyer, told Antonini that this ground is contaminated. Following plaintiff's unsuccessful effort to collect the judgment, a writ of execution issued against the assets of Marco and Antonini came back with no money and unsatisfied. Thereafter, plaintiffs sued Antonini, Marco Construction, and Hartford seeking to satisfy the judgment. In October of 2020, Western World moved to dismiss the complaint for failure to state a claim, and immediately following oral argument, the motion judge issued a decision dismissing the plaintiff's claims on summary judgment. The motion judge also determined the known injury and punitive damages exclusions barred coverage under the policy. On appeal, the court noted that the interpretation of an insurance contract is a question of law for the court to determine and can be resolved on summary judgment. Courts should interpret insurance policies according to their plain and ordinary meaning, and if there are no ambiguities in the language, courts cannot write for the insured a better policy of insurance than the one purchased. The pollution exclusion unambiguously excluded coverage for bodily injury or property damage arising out of the actual alleged or threatened discharge, seepage, migration, release, or escape of pollutants at the property, which was owned by Marco Construction during the policy periods. The record evidence established Marco Construction and Antonini knew of the property's contaminated status as early as 2004 
what Antonini learned of the pri property's prior usage. The court, therefore, concluded that the insurers satisfied their burden of demonstrating the pollution exclusion contained in their policies applied. The plaintiff's last attempt related to a certificate of insurance issued to a lender. The court did away with that argument, noting that certificates of insurance do not create or bind coverage. In fact, a standard certificate of insurance only evidences the existence of the policies to which it refers. It does not alter the terms of an indemnity agreement or the party's contract, nor does it alter or amend the terms of the policy to which it refers. It is not. It is not an insurance policy. Accordingly, the Court of Appeal concluded that a certificate conferred no rights on its holder, Sterling Bank, or on any of the plaintiffs. The trial court's decision was therefore affirmed. In my opinion, no insurance contract insures against any possible risk of loss. For the last few decades, CGL policies exclude pollution caused damages and all policies for the, at least the last three centuries exclude intentional acts. In this case, the developers, with knowledge that the property was contaminated, knew they were required to eliminate the contamination by order of the appropriate federal and state agencies, did nothing to cure the contamination and built houses on the contaminated property and sold them to innocent buyers. That type of tortious and probably criminal action is never an act that can be insured against. This video was adapted from my blog post, Zelma on Insurance, which is available free to anyone who clicks on the URL zelma.com slash blog. And you can subscribe to the blog and we'll receive an email advising you of each new blog, posting usually one every five days, sometimes even more. And you can also subscribe to the videos at youtube.com and at rumble.com and be advised of the videos. And if you like the videos, please click on the like button at YouTube or the uh, rumble button at rumble. And if this is interesting to you and you need more and detailed information about insurance and insurance claims handling, you might consider subscribing to my Locals community or to my Substack publications. Thank you for your attention.